Hey guys, so there's a massive variety of knives in regards to style, function, purpose, and a lot of people don't realize how much variety there is. Such a common question is, what kind of knife should I get? What kind of opener and lock is best? Etc, etc. One of the most important elements of a knife is how you open it, so this question is obviously very valid. I'm going to explain the what and why of knife opening methods in this video, and the playback bar will be broken up into segments if you feel like skipping through. Alright, let's get started. The most traditional of all folding knives is the good old slip joint. Just like a classic Swiss Army knife, which everyone would recognize, this more high-tech modern lion steel knife, which costs around $120, operates with a spring-loaded bar that runs along the spine here, and it applies pressure to the blade tang. So while not exactly locking anything open, it simply keeps the blade in place. You won't really use a slip joint for anything above very basic knife tasks. To open, you have to manually grab the blade itself like you saw me do, usually via notched cutout, which is called a nail nick, because you get your nail in it and pull it open. It's both cumbersome and unoffensive, and more importantly, it avoids legality issues with other knives that have locks. You can carry one of these almost anywhere where you can legally carry a knife. Elegant, classic, Arguably, the majority of folding knives open with a thumb stud. From affordable knives, like this $40 Ontario Rat, which really has an incredibly smooth action for the cost. Uh, I love Ontario knives, and this Rat too is one of the best knives you can buy for under $50, in my opinion. And it works up to this cream of the crop, Chavez Street Redencian, which is around $300. Thumb studs are simple, reliable, and quite honestly, very satisfying to operate. They're my personal favorite method of knife opening, but by no means the best. There really isn't a best. This is almost all personal preference and is all about what you need the knife to accomplish for you, what you want it to do for you. Thumb studs might not be a good choice for a knife you would need access in an emergency or uh, under duress because of the required fine motor control. However, thumb stud folders make up for this by being incredibly reliable and straightforward. Regarding technique, and this is very important, thumb studs require pressure in a collinear direction with the blade, or in simpler terms, push it up, not out. Push it up, and it opens easy. A lot of people have trouble with these Chavez knives because they try to push it that way. Push it up, and it flies right open, just like any thumb stud knife. On to flippers, which are, in my opinion, right next to thumb studs in both popularity and reliability. A flipper, like this awesome Civivi Conspirator, opens very conveniently by applying constant pressure with your index finger to this flipper tab. The tabs are uh, usually textured or shaped in a way that prevents finger slippage. Flippers are very dependable by design because, just like thumb stud openers, they don't rely on any extra internal mechanisms to function, so they can't really fail on you. I find flippers personally to be even more convenient than thumb studs, very fast to open from the pocket. Combine a flipper with a spring assist, like my trusty Kershaw Link that I have carried for a long time. This is my favorite beater knife, uh, and it just flies open faster than some autos, ready to rock and roll. Just a little bit of pressure here and the spring takes over. Uh, spring assist is different than automatic, by the way, which avoids legality issues because the blade must still be set into motion by the user. The downside with a spring assist is having to overcome the spring tension when closing the blade. Some knives, this one has been broken in a lot, and it's easier than others, but on some models, trying to overcome that spring tension can actually prevent the knife from being fully operated with one hand safely. Um, and regarding spring assist, this also exists on knives with thumb studs, like this Benchmade Barrage. It has a thumb stud and just a little bit of pressure, and look at that, that spring takes over. So, not just on flippers, spring assist exists on a lot of knives, it's very common. Sort of, last but not least for manual opening methods, is the infamous Spidey Hole, which is a major feature on almost all Spyderco folding knives. Most Spidey Holes have an ample diameter that allows the finger of your choice to throw the blade open. And just like a thumb stud, you need to apply pressure up, where the blade needs to be pointing, also in the direction you flick it. People that love Spyderco like me also probably know how to Spidey flick. Ooh, that was a bad one. There we go. Which is a method of opening these and looking really cool at the same time. It surprisingly makes sense because the knife opens 
and falls right into a usable secure grip all in one motion. So it's not just for looks. It's totally function as well. And this is an argument I get into with some people at the store. They think the Spidey flick is a gimmick. Uh, you know, I don't think it's just for show. I think it's actually the best way to open a Spyderco knife. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me, if you like to open your Spyderco with the flick. So I said I would touch on some oddballs or less common methods of opening. So first up is the Balasong, AKA the butterfly knife. This specific model is a Kershaw Lucha, and there are a few ways to open this, but fundamentally they are the same. You unlatch the handle, and while holding one handle, swing the other open. It is really hard to do that and get it captured on camera, but you get the idea. And it is also critical that you understand one of these handles is a bite handle, the other is a safe handle. The safe handle is the one that if you close the knife, the spine of the blade hits your hand instead of the edge, which is the bite handle. So improper technique can lead to getting bit by the blade and getting hurt. And it's best to learn how to use a battle song with a trainer before even attempting to try and manipulate one of these, let alone do tricks. I only know how to open these. I, I can't do tricks. Although I, I'd like to learn how to do it one day because it's really impressive when you see somebody that's good with a battle song showing off. And another uncommon method I should mention is the Emerson Wave. Uh, they are designed to open as you draw the knife from your pocket by applying pressure back and up at the same time. The hook catches on your pocket and deploys the blade extremely fast. You can also use the thumb button here to open as well. On to opening methods specifically used on autos. First, we have your standard push button, which also acts as a lock. You can call it a button lock, or more specifically, a plunge lock. These are as straightforward as it gets, and maybe as convenient as it gets as well. Not all knives with a push button are automatic, however, like the Sabibi Conspirator from earlier. This is a button lock knife, but it's manual, so you do have to have another method to open it. In this case, it's a flipper, but this is a plunge lock, and it's a really nice plunge lock. Um, this is one of my favorite knives. but. Like a spring-assisted blade, automatics require you to fight the spring tension when closing the blade, which can make one-handed operation very difficult, and in the case of this Protec Godson, very unsafe. You need two hands to operate this knife completely, and more importantly, safety. Uh, so that's where our next opening style comes into play, which is the thumb switch actuated OTF. And Microtech is the king of OTFs, or out the front knives. These operate via a thumb sliding switch that both deploys and retracts the blade. This is very special because it allows the knife to be 100% fully operated with one hand without adjusting your grip at all. This makes OTFs very attractive to first responders, police, or military. Now since almost everything comes at a cost, in this instance, that cost is reliability. There is always a small chance that you will fire your OTF and the spring will go pop rendering the knife completely disabled, and it has to be taken apart and repaired, and the spring has to be replaced. And then there are times that pocket lint, which has accumulated in the internal action, can result in this blade only partially deploying and not fully engaging with the lock bar. This isn't as catastrophic, however, it can be remedied by pulling the blade just all the way back out, where it will re-engage and can be used again. Uh, and a little bit of oil and compressed air can go a long way for preventing that. Just a little bit of maintenance on these. Keep them clean and they will work for a long time. And that covers it for just about 99% of knives in regards to opening methods. And like I said before, there are some even more oddballs that are just so rare. I don't even have any to use as an example, but they are mostly novelty knives or just unconventional for everyday use. Uh, if I helped one of you guys even get a little more confident about what to buy, then this video was a success. And if that person is you, please subscribe, like the video for me. I really appreciate you. Then check out knifehub.com and keep an eye out for more juicy knife content. Thank you for watching.